Solutions Review presents the Insight Jam Expert Keynote. Welcome. This is Eric Herzog, CMO of Infinidat. That was an exciting panel, and now we're going to lead in to another panel. Thank you again at the 7th Annual Insight Jam. I'm going to be discussing the key enterprise storage topics needed to know before you talk about the machine and market architecture. So we've got four key things we're gonna talk about today. First of all is AI and ML architectures, cybersecurity, of course you can't look at any industry uh, right up on the web. If you're still taking a, a, you know, an IT magazine at home, that doesn't mention cybersecurity. We're rethinking power and efficiency. Again, there is a global power shortage from a data center perspective. At the same time, there also is a data center build out, both for AI data centers and traditional data centers, all of which require massive power. And of course, all this is expensive. And one day you read the economy is great, the next day you read the economy is tough. And it also depends region by region all over the world. So IT has a huge impact on CapEx and OpEx. So let's get started with AI and machine learning architectures. These are critical in a number of ways. Obviously, you're seeing a huge ramp up of AI across the enterprise for applications, workloads, and use cases. Almost all large global enterprises are working something with AI right now. Now, most of them are still in the POC phase. And one thing you're gonna need to do as you deploy AI in your system is not only how it benefits you, but what is your return? Okay, there's been a couple articles lately, for example, one from MIT, talking about that everyone's doing AI, but it's not always able to justify and give a nice total cost of ownership and return on investment. Obviously, the CFO and the CIO wanna know, how am I spending my IT budget? So when you're looking at your AI systems, make sure that you're able to talk about not only what you did, how AI is accelerating your supply chain, how AI is benefiting your finance, how AI is helping you with HR or whatever you're using it for, but also how does it benefit the company financially? What's the financial impact? That will allow you when you're talking to the CIO, when you're talking to the VP of software, and absolutely when you're talking to the finance side of the house, oh yes, absolutely we should keep spending money on that. It is, and when you look at the big analyst firms, those that are doing surveys, it's either the number one or number two projected budget item. It was number two in 2025. And in most of the early write-ups talking about 2026, it's number one in these surveys of intent to spend. So it's gonna be a great thing for you, but you've gotta make sure you can justify it financially and make sure that you're deploying this in all areas. So of course, you've got things like your LLM, your SLM, your vector database. Do you need to change your server infrastructure? Obviously, there's a lot about AI-centric servers. And also, don't forget your enterprise storage infrastructure. You're going to see, is there a way for me to continue to use my existing enterprise storage? For example, something like an AI reference architecture like we have at Infinidat. So you want to make sure, how can I take advantage of it? How can I deploy it? And also, what's the cost about across? You need to have a holistic view of what the costs are. The other thing sweeping the industry, and you can't avoid it, is cyber. It's not if you'll be attacked, it's when and how often. Every day, you're reading about a major cyber attack on a major company, on a major government, provincial government, state governments, hospitals, the Fortune 500, all the time. And the cost is billions in some instances, and aggregately, it's over $8 trillion, the impact of these cyber attacks, both A, the attacks themselves, particularly ransomware, but malware, of course, if it destroys your data, you have to resurrect that data. So that is a financial impact. And then included in that number also is, what are you doing to protect yourself? Okay, so you've got A, the cost of the malware ransomware, B, the cost of recovery, C, the cost of prevention. Now with cybersecurity, you also wanna take a very holistic approach. You need to, again, have the alligators and the piranha in the moat. You've gotta have the high wall of your castle, but that's not enough. Remember, Robin Hood got into the castle, so they're gonna get in whether you like it or not. So you've gotta be patrolling the streets. So that's the application layer, 
the server infrastructure, your network infrastructure, and of course, your enterprise storage. So you need to take a holistic view. Obviously, you're going to look in, at the software side. So Simmons source software from a cybersecurity perspective across your entire data center. And some of you may be large enough where you want to have a security operations center, obviously known as a SOC. Now, you want to make sure that your enterprise storage is also included. And most CISOs, CIOs, and CTOs, when they're coming up with their comprehensive cybersecurity strategy, leave out enterprise storage. So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you're covering everything. Remember, 90% or more of your important data in your company sits on your enterprise storage. So you want to be able to protect it. You want to be able to understand, is it being attacked? You're going to want to recover rapidly. At the same time, you need to make sure that the data you're recovering is a known good copy, AKA it doesn't have malware or ransomware embedded in it. Because remember, when you're taking something, for example, like an immutable snapshot, which we have at Infinidat, you are making a permanent copy. And because malware, ransomware, and cyber attacks are all done surreptitiously, you don't always know whether there's malware, ransomware already on the storage. So you wanna make sure that snapshot, that database, that file system, that you are putting in a fenced forensic environment and making sure that what you have that copy of is actually a known good copy. Now, after you've decided you have a known good copy, one of the other best practices, you still should have your application owners take a look at it. Because in addition, making sure that that known good copy is not containing the malware or ransomware is it might have already destroyed some data structures. So your Oracle team, your SAP team, right? Whatever's the application workload, you've now got a known good copy, you're ready to re recover. You let that application team take a look at it to make sure that nothing's been damaged. Because even though you now are clean of malware or ransomware, again, the known good copy, that doesn't mean there hasn't been data done to the, to the data. And if the data is damaged, you want to make sure that you're recovering good data, right? And if you need to go get a second known good copy, then you may have to go get a second known good copy. So you need to make sure you're following that process. Now, one good thing from a storage perspective that some companies make available, such as Infinidat, is making sure that you can interface between your SIM and SOAR or your SOC and your storage. So for example, in something like Microsoft Sentinel, IBM Q Radar, or your SOC, if you have a SOC, detects a cyber attack, you want to make sure that you're automatically and proactively taking action on storage. So with that level of integration between your SIM, SOAR, and your SOC, it's going to kick off an immutable snap. Now, of course, all of you who are using snapshots know that snapshots are done on a regular basis, every four hours, every 12, once a day. So if Microsoft Central or your SOC detects an attack, you don't want to wait. You want to start taking snapshots instantaneously and automatically. And you can do that if your storage is integrated with your SIM, your SOAR, or your SOC. The second phase is you may want to, if you have something like Infinidat's Cyber Detection, which uses AI and ML technology to scan storage for malware or ransomware, you've taken that snapshot because your SOC told you there was a cyber attack, that's an automated process. You can then set that up to then scan that snapshot and take a look right away to see if you've got malware or, or ransomware. And of course, you want to make sure that when you're taking those snapshots, that you're using a vendor where the snapshots have no impact on the active workloads and use cases. So that allows you then to do it. So in short, you know, overall comprehensive cybersecurity strategy, edge, servers, networks, applications, and you want to make sure enterprise storage is included. The other trend sweeping the industry is the power shortage. You read about it all the time. Now, a lot of times it's about how AI needs lots of power, and it absolutely does. And people are building AI data centers or they're refactoring existing data centers to handle AI. But the power shortage is not just for AI data centers, it's traditional data centers as well. So when you talk to industry analysts or you talk, talk again amongst your own teams there, you are going to see that, oh my God, we're running out of power in data center A or running out of power in data center B. Even if you're not doing AI, if you're doing AI, that exacerbates everything. So what you've seen is a rapid, rapid, rapid growth of data center construction. 
whether it be traditional data centers or AI-centric data centers. So how can you deal with this? You've got the construction going on, but they're not constructed yet. So you wanna take some action to help you be more power efficient. So for example, one thing you could do is something like consolidating storage. One of our Fortune 500 customers leveraged our Infinidat technology to consolidate 288 floor tiles down to 61, running all the same applications, workloads, and use cases. 288 to 61. Talk about saving watts, slots, power, and floor space. Now, of course, what you've done with that power is you reallocate it to other applications or workloads. That could be AI. It could be some other workload. Or if your data center is fine, by doing that consolidation and other storage power efficiency things that you should be taking care of, you could then take that budget and use it for some other project, whether that be an AI project, a cybersecurity project, or some other project. And of course, by doing that level of consolidation using power efficient storage, it also allows you to optimize the existing data center. And if you're definitely already running out of power and your company is constructing another data center, or you're going to try to uh, bolster what you've got by using a colo or a service provider, you've got to make sure there's still space available. And if there isn't, you want to optimize what you have right now to get through until that data center has finished construction or until you've closed on that contract with your co-location facility and get it configured and set up, right? So by consolidating storage, again, 288 floor tiles to 61, using more power efficient storage, you can free up power cooling and budget for either other projects or to move to the server farm or move it into your network space or move it into your SAP workloads, right? Because you don't have power to run the SAP software. So those are the things that you want to do from a power and efficiency perspective around storage. You also want to do it in other areas. You want power efficient servers. Now, obviously AI centric servers consume a lot of power, but there are regular servers that are also just like we're doing in storage at Infinidat and the storage community is doing making more efficient for standard servers. People are trying to do that as well because they know AI servers are not going to be power efficient. It's just the way of the world. So you want to make sure that you're optimizing power across your entire infrastructure stack storage in particular, because again, for large global enterprises, you can have tens of petabytes, hundreds of petabytes of storage, which consumes incredible amounts of power and cooling. So you want to make sure you're saving that. Now, the last thing is the impact on budgets. How can you save on capital expenditures? How can you save on operational expenditures? And these are looked at on nonstop basis. Why do you want to do that? A, the economy is up and down. And with the economy up and down, in general, IT budgets are not going up. They're staying flat. At the same time, the CEO says, or the CIO is saying, we need this AI project in finance and this AI project over here, or we need to get this cyber stuff going. So there's limited budget dollars. So what you want to do is make sure you're optimizing your CapEx and operational expenditures. You can do this in a number of ways from a storage perspective. One, consolidating storage like we just talked about. 288 floor tiles to 61. The CapEx is much less expensive to start. And then the ongoing operational expense, the power, the cooling, the data center floor space, especially if you're using a colo or service provider facility because they charge for that. And also the IT operations. Remember, IT operations, there's an IT skills gap. So if you can do what one of our customers does, over 30 petabytes and only two admins across six data centers, that frees up IT operational manpower to work on other projects. So again, OPEX perspective. You want to make sure that what you're doing is constantly optimizing not only your capital expenditure, but again, your operational expenditures as well. You want to make sure you're doing that across the boat, not just in storage, but what can you do to optimize your server infrastructure? What about your network infrastructure? You're not always going to be able to save money on CapEx and OpEx, but you've got to make sure it's a big focus. Unless you're the exception to the rule, which is budgets are flat, and that is the rule, of particularly in the large enterprise, the global Fortune 1000, budgets are not going up in IT, and you have an IT skills gap, the average company has an IT skills gap of approximately 27% of open IT recs. There's no one to fill them. So if you can go from 15 storage admins to four, you just freed up 
11 people to get retrained to work on the new AI project, the cyber project, or just other areas in your IT infrastructure. Your new effort to switch from virtualization, for example, to containers. If you got a project like that and 15 people are managing storage and you can get to four, there's 11 humans that can work on that project. So you want to make sure you're looking at not only the direct OPEX, like power and cooling budgets, but also what I'll call the indirect, which is your human capital. How can you use that human capital more effectively? And again, if you go from only two admins, for sake of argument, managing 30 petabytes, and you used to have six admins managing 15 petabytes, you just freed up again four people to work on other projects. And since there's an IT skills gap, you've got trained IT people. They understand IT, you give them a little bit of extra training on containers, a little bit of extra training on AI or cyber, and boom, you've got a skilled IT resource to leverage. So again, the key things that are leading in for 2026, AI and AI architectures. B, cyber. It's not going away. Cyber criminals are ever more sophisticated. They're not like in one of those old gangster movies where you see them running around with machine guns. These are highly intellectual. They're smart. They know what they need to do to capture data on the server side. They need to know what they need to do in your application layers, and they clearly know what they need to do in storage, whether they're going to destroy your data, malware, or try to hold you for ransom. So that's not going away. And in fact, in the recent PwC survey of executives, which was in October of 2025, only 6% of executives surveyed think they're prepared for a cyber attack. Think about that, 6%, that's it. The survey was large enterprises. And as you see from all the attacks going on at local hospitals, you know, smaller entities, at local governments, right? State governments, they're ripe because they don't have a strategy. So make sure you've got a comprehensive cybersecurity strategy, the edge, the network, the core, the servers, the applications, and enterprise storage and make that all work together for you. Of course, power, power, power. Every time you pick up an IT website or magazine, data centers being built. AI data centers, more regular data centers. You want to make sure that you're able to handle that. And what can you do with your storage, your servers, and your other infrastructure to free up power to use on other items? And of course, budgets. How can you optimize in an era where budgets are flat to down because of the up and down economy, right? You may be exception, maybe your company is raising your IT budget, but surveys of CIO show that IT budgets are flat to down year to year. It was the same thing in 23 to 24, 24 to 25, and now again, 25 to 26. And yet they want more and more out of your IT. So you need to make sure that you're doing what you need to do. Again, thank you very much for listening to what we're talking about and all of the Insight Jam panels. Thank you. For video highlights, replays, and more, visit InsightJam.com.